we put together this PowerPoint presentation and this video show so when you come to my website and you are involved in an automobile accident, you can get some preliminary information that will help you make a decision about what you're going to do with your case. I want to stress at the outset, this is an overview. And if you're involved in a serious automobile accident, you should hire an attorney. And I hope you hire me. But anyway, let's go through what we've called vehicle accidents causing personal injury. A vehicle accident causing a personal injury, you know what that is. That's a truck, that's a car, that's a motorcycle, that's if you're a pedestrian. It's if an 18-wheeler runs over you. God bless you. That's what we're discussing. The first issue is fault. Who's at fault? You have to always start with fault. You might be seriously injured in a one-car accident that you wrecked. That's not a case. And what you examine fault with, you start with the accident report, the witnesses to the accident, the photos of the accident, in a real complex case where the fault is not clearly established, you may have to retain an accident reconstructionist because sometimes they will dispute who's at fault. We have on our staff accident reconstructionists who work with us as independent contractors, some of the finest in the state. Property damage. The more severe property damage you have, the stronger the case. Let me explain. Funny story, I once had a client who was rear-ended by a car and there was no damage to the bumper. My client tried to maintain she had severe neurological damage. The bumper wasn't even dented. That's a tough sell. Don't believe what you read and hear about. Severe property damage is very significant to prove. You can't say, well, even though the bumper wasn't bent, the way I was twisted, it's hogwash. Trust me. By the way, that client wanted an insurance company to pay her for a frozen pack of peas that she used as an ice bag, 39 cents. Rentals. Getting a rental. If there is rental coverage of the insurance company at fault, you can get a rental. Or if you have that on your own policy. But it's a very short-term period, usually like a week, and they want their car back. I cannot stand this issue. It's very frustrating for our clients and ourselves. The collision. Do you have collision insurance? And we'll get to that. Something that's very important and I want you to know, we do not charge to help you with your property damage claim if it involves a personal injury. So we can make you whole. Causation. This is really important. You might be in a severe car accident, but guess what? You already had a back injury. So it's hard to prove that the back injury was caused by that accident. We call it causation. So you have to prove fault, and you have to prove that the accident caused the injuries. In addition to that, you have to deal with pre-existing injury issues. Now this is also an important point, aggravation of injury. Let's say you did have a bad back, but your back got a lot worse as a result of this accident. You can make a claim for that. Ambulance and the EMT. Really important. What you say at the scene to an ambulance driver or ambulance workers or EMTs is important. For example, if you make a claim that your knee was hurt in the accident, but you didn't tell them at the scene your knee hurt, that may or may not be an issue. The emergency room, same thing. They're the first people that are going to have contact with you. So what you tell the emergency room is going to affect your case. It's called credibility. You can't complain later that you had all these injuries if you're not even complaining about it right after the accident. Now, some injuries are delayed. Primary care physician, once again, just the same as the ER doctor. Chiropractor, same issue. And I want to stress this. I refer people to chiropractors as well. But I'm going to go ahead and give you a tip. I'm not a doctor. Don't go to the chiropractor 236 times. Let me give you an example. One of the cases that I lost in trial, and I always compliment my opposing counsel, he held up my client's chiropractic records and told the jury, Mr. Dieter's client went to the chiropractor 150 times. You have to ask yourself, 
if it wasn't making you any better, why did you keep going? I lost. was a good argument. Physical therapy, very important. Physical therapy, once again, with all due respect to physical therapists out there, if you're seriously injured, I mean, your knee is destroyed, you need physical therapy. You know, if your back is broke, you need physical therapy. But physical therapy for an extended period of time because you got whiplash, not going to cut it. Neurologist, very important. If you have a nerve damage, you're going to need a neurologist to back up that nerve damage. And there are tests that can scientifically tell whether or not you have nerve damage. How do you like that? You can actually have a test that sees what, that tells you whether the nerves are going from your hand to the central nervous system. Orthopedic. I'm just going to go ahead and, you know I call it straight. If you have broken bones, you have a better case. And you need to get those broken bones treated by an orthopedic doctor. If you got a case where you need a neurosurgeon, you got a really good case. Because then you're talking about major, major catastrophic injury. Surgery, once again, if you need surgery for your injury, you're going to get more money for your case. Independent experts. The other side in a case is allowed to take you to an independent doctor and have them assess your injuries. For example, if you say, my back's all messed up because of this accident, they are allowed to have your medical records and you seen by their doctor to determine whether or not they will agree with you. By the way, the best cases, their doctor will say, yep, they're really hurt. Very important. You don't get to walk into a courtroom and say, I think I got hurt as a result of the accident. You need your doctors to testify based upon a reasonable degree of medical probability, which means greater than 50%, more likely than not, that you suffered that injury. All of your medical treating doctors are going to have to give that opinion as your experts. Here's what you're entitled to if you're injured in an accident your damages, your lost income as a result of the accident. By the way, the husband isn't going to get money for taking his wife to the doctors and missing work. You don't get that. Medical bills. What are your medical bills? You don't get to have them paid twice. If health insurance pays for them, you don't get them paid twice. Pain and suffering. That's where we come in handy. We have our own video team. Okay, Bulldogs Media Production. And what we do with our clients, and we've settled some cases recently for over a million dollars. And you know why? Because my video team, Mike Zimmerman and Chuck Holbrook, will go to the home or the hospital and videotape that person. We, we showed one videotape. It took 30 minutes for our client to go from the bed to the bathroom. It's very powerful. That's where we come in. How did this affect your life? It's mental and physical pain and suffering. Depression, recoverable. Physical pain, recoverable. How much pain medicine did you have to take? If, unfortunately, you're watching this and you lost a loved one, my I first express my condolences. If that ever happens, there's additional things that we have to do as your lawyer. You have to set up an estate that's where you go to a probate court and you get appointed. That gives you the power to pursue the claim. If there's a will that appoints that person, that person gets appointed. If there's no will, it's usually the closest living relative. If, God forbid, you lose a child, the parents are the ones that are going to be appointed. So you got to go through probate. Very important, a child who's under 18 years old who's injured... You have to go through the same process. And even though we are all guardians of our children, you have to have a court appoint you as a guardian through a process. And if, God forbid, you've lost a child who is under 18 years old, as a parent, you are entitled to consortium. You know what's really tragic about this? Is we love our children even if they're over 18. is the same as they're under 18. But the law draws the line at 18. Statute of limitations. In Kentucky and Ohio, you have two years from the time of the accident to file a lawsuit. Most cases get resolved 
within the time frame of the statute of limitations. It's also important to point out that sometimes in Kentucky, it's two years extended from what the no-fault or what we call PIP payments. It's complicated. That's why you need a lawyer if you're seriously injured. Or even if you're not seriously injured, you know what we do? Let's say you just got whiplash in a case. We'll get your medical records, your medical bills. We can get your case settled and get you a few thousand dollars in a matter of months. Not all cases are worth a lot of money. You know what I always tell my clients? Can you use a couple thousand bucks? Most say yes. Liability insurance. That is the insurance on the vehicle that hit you that is at fault. Now, if you're driving a car in Ohio, you have to have at least $12,500 in coverage. In Kentucky, it's $25,000. That is to protect you if you cause an accident. I can tell you tragic stories about this. That's people who lose an eye, lose a life, and there's only $25,000 of insurance. But when we talk about liability insurance, if you've been injured in an accident and you're watching this video, the most important thing for you to find out is how much insurance did the driver who caused the accident have. Uninsured insurance. That is insurance on your own policy in case the guy that caused the accident that you were in did not have insurance. I beg of you to contact your insurance company, your agent. If you do not have uninsured insurance, get it. It has to be offered to you, but you can refuse it. Can you imagine if you are seriously injured in an accident and the person who hit you did not have insurance? In these bad economic times, here's what's happening. People are getting insurance to get their driver's license uh, renewed, or not the driver's license, to get their insurance coverage renewed, and they get their license plate and all that, and then they cancel it. There's a lot of uninsured. And besides that, if you have to decide between rent, food, and insurance, what are you going to choose? You need to protect yourself. This is even more important insurance. Not everybody has this, but it's cheap. You can get $100,000 or more of underinsurance for a few bucks. What this is, is this is insurance you can buy on your own car that protects you if the other guy doesn't have enough insurance. For example, let's say the person who hit you only has $25,000 of insurance and you got a broken back. If you have $100,000 of underinsurance, you will get the $25,000 from the car that hit you plus $100,000 under your own policy. Get this insurance. It protects you when the other side does not have enough insurance. An umbrella policy. I have one. I have a million dollar umbrella policy, which means if I'm at fault and I cause some problems, in addition to my car insurance, I have a million dollar umbrella policy. I recently represented two people, one tra uh, both tragically injured, not killed, one with a permanent brain injury from a motorcycle accident. There was 250000 for each of them on the car. The guy that was driving the truck who caused the accident it was a construction company that had a million dollar umbrella. Guess what? If you don't have a lawyer, you don't have the bulldog finding out these things, you don't know how to find out if there is an umbrella. The difference in me finding out that, a million dollars more insurance for my client. Health insurance. Health insurance pays the medical bills. And I just want to go ahead and tell you this. If you have health insurance, Turn in all your medical bills to your health insurance. Here's why. They have agreements with hospitals and medical providers to not pay the full amount of your medical bill. So let's say there's a 10,000 bill. They may only pay 4,000, and the medical provider discounts the rest. Health insurance companies are becoming more and more aggressive collecting this money back from you. You have to deal with it. Your health insurance contract states that you must reimburse them for anything they pay out. But you can deal with that later. So, this is very important. If you're watching this because you're in a serious accident, you're going to say, thank you, Bulldog. I didn't even have to call you. I'm doing this so when you need a lawyer, you're going to come to me. To my knowledge, nobody else is doing videos like this. But I digress. If you're seriously injured in an accident, use your health insurance, not the auto insurance. Workers' compensation. 
If you're injured at work, you're stuck with workers' comp. There's one exception. If you're in an automobile accident while you're working, you're a FedEx driver or you're a delivery driver, you not only can pursue a workers' comp claim, you can also pursue a car accident personal injury claim. Settlement. What we do is we gather all the medical bills. We gather all the medical records. We have a nurse summarize those and does a nice summary of what your case is all about. Highlight all the pain. If it's a serious case, we'll get our video team on it. We put your case together, we get it to the insurance company, and then it's a negotiating process. Mediation, sometimes you have independent person act as a mediator between the two parties. And it's always a good thing because you always find out a little bit about your case and the other case. And if it doesn't work out, you can still go to court. Arbitration, used less in car accident cases, but you can agree to binding arbitration or non-binding arbitration. That's when you present your case to someone who acts like a judge. Trial. I'm not going to get into this, but if all the settlement efforts fail, then you've got to go to trial. And I'm going to make a sales pitch here. The Kentucky Trial Court Review reported that I've tried more plaintiff's cases than any lawyer in the state of Kentucky the last 10 years. I want you to know that I've tried equally enough cases in Ohio and Cincinnati. I know for a fact I have probably tried more plaintiff's cases, more injured party cases as a plaintiff's attorney than any lawyer in the tri-state area. And I've also done it in other states because I'm licensed in Florida, but I've handled legal matters in probably 25 to 30 states through special permission. Appeal. One of the reasons why you want to settle your case is because appeals take forever. They take years. But this doesn't happen a lot in car accident cases. Contingency fee. The law allows, the Bar Association rules allow, for lawyers to be paid on a contingency fee basis. Why? Who has money in their pocket to pay lawyers an hourly rate to pursue an injury claim? And in a car accident case, the standard fee is 33%. What I do with my clients is this. I want a 33% contingency fee agreement. Subject to how much time and effort we put in, subject to how much money is recovered, at my discretion, I will discount that fee at settlement time. My secretary and my wife get mad at me that I do that too much. A little humor in the middle of our presentation. Public opinion. The public opinion is, is that, oh, all these frivolous lawsuits and everything else. I will tell you right now, I have never filed a frivolous lawsuit. A frivolous lawsuit is one, it's like if I sue you and we've never met, and I'm suing you for something, what are you talking about? We've never even met. How can you be suing me? Lawsuits involving personal injury. People that are hurt, the Constitution gives you the right. And by the way, they probably need to change this. It's a $20 dispute. But if you have a dispute that's over $20 that involves an injury, you have the constitutional right to step into a courtroom. And isn't it better that we allow people to resolve disputes in a forum which is peaceful, kind of peaceful, as opposed to neighbors fighting? We have this for a reason. So there you have it. You can call me, and we're going to put it on the screen. You can call me on my cell phone, 859-250-2527. You can email me at eric at ericdieters.com. And look at me. My Blackberry, it's never far from me. All emails and all text messages and numbers come to my Blackberry. It drives everybody around me nuts. I will return your phone call within 24 hours, usually much sooner. If you text or email me, you're going to get responded to right away. And let me tell you something. The sooner you engage a lawyer in a serious accident, the better. We will come to the hospital for you, and we know how to do it with dignity. And we will also come to your home if necessary. I can send my video team out to the accident scene within 24 hours after it happened. So don't delay. Make sure you call us. I am readily accessible. And let me tell you something. Everybody thinks I'm busy. I am never too busy to handle your case.